Hi everybody, you are watching Vitorials. My name is Alex and today we're gonna create a cohesive icon set in Gravity Designer. I decided to throw away my uh, font Avasom from my, one of my sites and create this simple set of icon that I'm gonna use in CSS Sprite. So, we're gonna use a modified isometric grid where the guides incline it in the, at the angle of 45 degrees. Uh, this grid is also called Demetric because it uh, usually used to create an uh, Demetric projections. And it also very common uh, for icon design. So let's start Alt N or Option N on your Mac. And I'm gonna size it with this uh, 1024 to 768 pixels website small. So you can click on this chevron icon and choose this option website small. Then navigate to this right panel set and from this document panel find the isometric bullet. Uh, click on it and on the fields below we need to set the size of 10 pixels, angle of 45 degrees number one and negative 45 number two. So far so good. Let's go and increase the scale with Ctrl plus command plus. And uh, first of all let's place uh, guides and to open your rulers you need to use Alt Ctrl R or Option command R on your Mac. So grab your ruler and uh, push it to this intersection. Now navigate to this chevron near the magnet icon and make sure that your snap to grid and snap to full pixel is enabled. Both should be checked. So I'm gonna place my first guide here, second guide here and third guide here. Very nice. Now let's grab a line tool and draw a diagonal line. And this line should cross two small cells of this grid. Now we can create a duplicate with Ctrl Shift D, Command Shift D. It's a clone command. You can also find it here. Edit, clone. And flip it horizontally using this icon on the tool panel. Select them both and go to the border, increase the border weight to around, let's say, 4 pixels. Looks good. Now we need to decrease the bots and in order to do that we need to go to the advanced stroke settings that is near the trash icon on the stroke panel. And here we need to set a bot of the engines, this leftmost icon. Looks nice, go to the modify, oh sorry guys, we don't need to, let's simply move a duplicate using Alt and Shift and dragging to the left. With this duplicate selected, let's go to the modify, path, vectorize border. What it's gonna do, it's uh, leave us with the fill, fill it rectangles, two fill it paths. It's basically all we need to do to create a close icon. And now let's create a Sharon icon. And in order to do that, I need to create another duplicate with Alt and Shift or Option and Shift selected, of course. And with this duplicate, I'm going to increase the size. Please grab the rectangle tool or click R. And I'm gonna create a rectangle. Using the pointer tool and holding shift to restrain the angle at uh, 15 degrees, I'm gonna rotate it at 45 degrees. Now we can, can disable our snap to grid and snap to full pixel options. So snap to full pixel, snap to grid is disable it because I'm gonna scale my rectangle at the top right direction to cover all of this lack of my cross. 
like so. Now I'm gonna Ctrl Shift D and place this rectangle at the opposite side, like so. So far so good. Make sure that your snap to the shape uh, available for you, so it's sh gonna be selected. Now select all of these shapes. Go to the tools panel and from this uh, boolean shape separator uh, run this subtract command. Uh, sorry guys, we of course we need first uh, to select the close icon and merge them. Then convert them to the path. Uh, sorry guys, I completely uh, forgot uh, about this step. Modify path and convert to path. Now we have uh, one single path uh, that is uh, sitting on the back of our rectangles. And now select these two rectangles, select this uh, cross and go to the subtract uh, boolean shape operator. Now it fires pretty well. Make sure that you have an ideal, an ideal diagonal lines. Looks very nice. And uh, let's go and again convert it to pass. But this time I'm gonna simply use Ctrl Shift P, Command Shift P on the mark. So I am converted to pass. Now it's single path. You can also check whether it has an uh, additional anchor point that we don't need. For example, it has an anchor points here and there. I simply can uh, select them with the uh, subset tool or D use D and then delete. Click and delete. So now it's ideal diagonal lines. But we need to move further and to move further we need to move to the right. Let's, let's go and Simply draw a line, another line. This is gonna be a horizontal line. Increase the uh, stroke to 4. Uh, we can hide, but again, we can hide them. Then go to the vectorized border. Again, modify, path, vectorized border to create rectangle. That is it. This line is bisected by our guide right in the middle. And we need to hold Alt and Shift. Alt and Shift and push it right to the top guide. And then make a duplicate and push it right to the bottom guide. I think we need to resize it a bit, these lines. I uh, I suppose you resize it in advance. Don't repeat. And then copy. Looks good. It's gonna be our hamburger menu button. And last button that I'm gonna create is the user button. I'm gonna navigate here. And go to the of course the ellipse. Uh, grab the ellipse tool or click E and draw an ellipse that a little bit, a little bit, guys, not just tangent with all of this line, but a little bit crossing this line. Then go to the angles and slice the ellipse in half, setting the zero in the first field. No, sorry, in the second field, of course. Push it on the bottom. And create another ellipse. Like so. No, I'm gonna create an ellipse. Like so. So with this ellipse selected, go to the modify, uh, sorry, uh, with this ellipse selected, create a clone of this ellipse, Ctrl Shift D, Command Shift D, then go to the modify, path, and expand shrink. We need to expand this ellipse on two pixels. 
click OK. Now with this circle selected and with this half of the circle selected, go to the subtract boolean shape operator and run a subtract and this is how you can create a user icon. Give it a black color and probably convert it to path. Ctrl Shift P, Command Shift P. So it's now a path. Last but not least, guys, we can delete this uh, initial uh, crossing lines because we already have our design. Last but not least, I'm going to resize a bit uh, this close icon. Sorry guys, first of all, of course, combine them and then Ctrl Shift P, Command Shift P to create, make it path. And then resize it. And here we need to simply follow by the eye. So guys, this is how you can create a coherent icon set in Gravit Designer. We can now save it as a... No, uh, first of all, we, of course, we should trim the canvas to the size of our icons. If you want to create a sprite, of course, from them. Then go to the file, uh, export and export PNG. Make sure that your background is transparent and voila, we have a coherent sprite of PNG icons. Incline it at the 45 degrees, so you don't need to be too cautious about the uh, anti-aliasing and be sure that they work in a small size in your browser. I hope you have some value from this tutorial, thank you for watching and have a great day. And don't forget to join Gravit Tutorials group and Gravit Designer Users group.